So, how did China become the world's oldest continuous civilization? What is the dynasty, and who is Confucius? Well, let's find out. China was born along two great rivers, as we mentioned last chapter, the Yellow River and the Yangtze River. People began farming rice and millet here around a thousand BCE. Silk cultivation would follow at around three thousand BCE, and silk would remain a Chinese trade secret for thousands of years. But these early farmers had a problem: the Yellow River. Which had this nasty habit of flooding everyone to death from time to time, and Yu, Yu the engineer who we mentioned la in last chapter, he spent thirteen years traveling up and down the land, fighting the floods. So dedicated was he to his task. That he walked past his own home on several occasions, but never went inside to visit his wife or newborn child. Yu built canals that led the excess flood water into the fields or out to the sea, and so stopped the floods. Everyone was very impressed with Yu. He gets named the king, and so starts the China's first dynasty, the Xia Dynasty. So, what is a dynasty? You might ask. A dynasty is a family that ruled over China. If the family dies or is overthrown, a new family takes over. Eventually, China would be ruled by dynasties from now up until nineteen eleven. It kind of tells you a lot about Chinese culture that one of the greatest heroes is a hydraulic engineer, the Xia. Are said to have ruled from around twenty one hundred B.C. to sixteen hundred B.C.E. We believe that Xia is fictional, which isn't wrong, but isn't really right either. We have evidence like bronze tools, the remains of cities. And tombs near Alito that point to an urban civilization existing around 2100 BCE to 1600 BCE, but it probably wasn't an actual unified state. More a collection of culturally similar cities and villages. It was once believed that a distinct Chinese culture spread out from the Xia to the rest of China, but now examples of dozens of Neolithic cultures ranging from Manchuria to Guangdong have been unearthed. None is really more advanced than the others. Chinese civilization seems to have been forged by all of these cultures mixing together. In the 16th century BCE, the Chinese had learned to mix tin, lead, and copper together to form bronze. Thus came the name Bronze Era. Warriors riding a new Eurasian import called the chariot took these fancy bronze weapons and clubbed Xia to death. These people founded the Shang Dynasty, which was like an actual dynasty. Sorry, Xia, but you just won't. Shang built the oldest nation-state in Asia. 
that we have significant, undisputable historical proof for, as they left behind a fully formed writing system, a precursor to modern Chinese with over three thousand characters, many still in use today. The Shang were led by an all-powerful priest king, who ruled over a rapidly increasing population, which expanded in every direction, colonizing and building large walled cities throughout the kingdom. The greatest of which was Anyang. Capital city of twelve kings and eight generations of Shang. Much of this growth was fueled by bronze, sharpened hardy bronze agriculture tools. Increasing, incre, increased farming productivity. Armies armed with bronze weapons and armor. Could conquer and control more territory, and large bronze bells and ritual items demonstrated the wealth and power of the state and the king. Between thirteen hundred and twelve hundred BC, the domesticated horse and four-wheeled chariot changed. The face of warfare and the societal structure within Shang China. Now, beneath the king was a powerful military nobility, who controlled vast, sprawling estates, centered around the production and maintenance of chariots and the breeding of horses. Over time. The Shang gained a reputation for cruelty and oppression, evidenced by the hundreds of commoners believed to have been buried alive. They have been found in graves of Shang nobility. At the Shang capital of Anyang, archaeologists have dug up tens of thousands of so-called Oracle bones. Priests would scratch questions for the gods on these bones, and then apply the heat to them. The heat will crack the bones, and those cracks would be read as a response from the gods. The incredible thing about these oracle bones is that the questions were written on them. The Chinese independently invented writing, something that's only been done ar- around five times in human history. These bones have recognizably Chinese characters. We can still read a fair amount of them. This script on the oracle bones is the ancestor of modern Chinese. The convenient thing about Chinese characters is that, unlike Roman alphabet, Chinese characters, Hanzi, the system is based on shape rather than pronunciation. The shape from pictures or symbols, which makes it easy to guess out the meaning. Here. Um, a merchant's daily routine can be restored based on those Chinese characters that we figured out. Early in the morning, the husband woke up and started his day of work. The hairpin he used to pin up his hair also represents his role as the master of the family. So it is、um, the Chinese character hands、uh, for husband. <laughs> Kneeling before a bowl of clear water, which was used as a mirror, he checked his look before he went out hunting. So came the hands. <laughs> a deer 
Look at the antlers and how the hand's deer resembles the shape of the lovely animal.